Hey, what's going on you guys? Bring your friends here. I wanted to go over some stuff about the uh, the patch that was released a few days ago with the uh, upcoming changes for every class, but I'm going to talk about Mesmer in specific. Um, what I'll be going over is just possible builds for Mesmer and my overall thoughts on what they did good, what they did bad, improvements and such. Um, one of the things that really stands out to me is, one, obviously they made Persona Baseline, which is good. And a couple of things that kind of didn't really make sense to go baseline, like illusionary elasticity, and I guess even protective mantras. But like the thing that is really uh, is out there to me is they didn't make an illusionary invigoration baseline, which is strange. Like they just completely deleted the trait, which might hurt Shatter Mesmer overall, especially power, because you won't obviously have that much Shatter potential. But I guess they kind of make up for it in a bit because of confounding suggestions and mental torment, especially the damage versus inactive, even though you'll be shattering a lot less, but the damage in which you'll be doing is just that much greater. So it'll definitely be, uh, I guess, more skill oriented with shatter, especially power. And let's see, here's like a couple builds I came up with for county shatter, standard power, and the downsides of the whole patch in general. So like, for example, for standard power, it seems like whatever tree you go into for Mesmer, it's always going to be domination and dueling if you're going any type of DPS. And then the rest are just pretty much your choice for the most part. So like Connie Shatter, let's start off in domination. You pick up Confounding Suggestions, which is one second stun, not to mention that Persona's baseline. So five second cooldown on days which is stun, which is pretty much retarded. And then obviously going in the master for Connie Shatter. Now this is where Connie Shatter might actually shine for a bit because the only way to reset your shatters now is Signet of Illusion. So Signet builds might actually make a comeback when it comes to Connie Shatter because it's potentially double the DPS that you had before. So if I were to run Connie Shatter, I'd probably run the Signet Heal, Signet of Illusions, and Signet of Midnight with Portal. That way, you know, just seems like a decent fit. However, with, if I'm making a County Shatter, I didn't really see anything in Grandmaster that was too enticing. Like, I would take Power Block, but they really need to make it to where you could pick a Master trait if you don't want to pick up a Grandmaster trait. Because I would pick up Blurred Inscriptions and Shattered Concentration and then pretty much just ignore the Grandmaster traits. When it comes to dueling, uh, a lot of good things when it comes to conditions. However, this is in question for me. I don't really understand Confusing Combatants because it says you and your illusions inflict confusion when you critical hit. So like, what does that mean? Like, I, I don't know. I need somebody to clarify that for me because like, for example, say if I have teleport and I dodge roll with deceptive evasion and I make a clone and I teleport to a guy and I hit him with sword one, right? I crit him. But since the clone is still catching up to the guy, how will he inflict confusion? Will it just like magically appear on the guy? Like, I don't know how confusion will work. They need to kind of reword this or change it. I don't know what the deal is with this one. But with County Shatter, uh, I would definitely go with Duelist Discipline. I would run pretty much the same combo I would now, which is uh, sword Sword Pistol Staff. Pistol attacks from you and your illusions have a chance to cause bleeding, interrupting a foe, recharges pistol skills. So, with this and Confounding Suggestions, you basically have a chance to double stun people if they don't have stability or Aegis or anything like that because the second projectile from Magic Bullet is Daze. So, if you interrupt two people at once, you're, you can essentially magic bolt twice because the recharge is refunded by 50% each time you interrupt somebody. So you can essentially fire magic bolt twice if you interrupt somebody, which is pretty crazy. And then I would pick up blind anticipation because it's just overall just damage negation. It's just too good not to pick up if you're going any shatter build, like blind flows around you when you use a shatter skill, AOE blind has the radius of cast storm, three and a half seconds. That's just ridiculous. And then obviously deceptive evasion because 
it's just too good not to have. It's pretty much the only reason that Mesmer has been so viable, or anywhere near viable in any type of competitive play, has been Acceptive Evasion, hands down. And then, for Connie Shander going into Illusions, all Shatter Skills inflict Confusion, which is really good. And then, when it comes to Adept, there isn't really one that, probably Persistence of Memory I would pick up for Condi, just because you're shattering anyways, and the more recharge the better. I wouldn't pick, take the Pledge because I wouldn't take Chorch because obviously of Duelist Discipline. And then going in the Master, I would definitely pick Malicious Sorcery hands down just because of the damage versus damage increase versus moving is up by 50%. I'm pretty sure this would apply even if you weren't Scepter because I wouldn't choose Scepter anyways because it's garbage and Scepter needs to be completely reworked in my opinion for it to be anywhere near viable, but that's just me. Like, when it comes to possible fixes on Scepter, the... Basically, the, the Torment application needs to be direct instead of just, Oh, I just dodged a guy, so I'm just gonna apply Torment to that, ha ha ha! You know, because you can block a Rock Dog, you can block pretty much anything, and then just the Torment would be directed to that person. It's not reliable damage, therefore it's not a reliable weapon. Uh, going to Grandmaster, obviously Maimed of Disillusion because they buffed it, giving two stacks of Torment now instead of one. And it's actually buffed even more because of Persona, so you can essentially get eight stacks of Torment onto a guy, including yourself, if you have full illusions out at the time you shatter, which is pretty crazy. Let's see what else do I have on the list here. And then Power. So going to Power, Domination. So Domination, obviously, Confounding Suggestions again. Shattered Concentration, and then Mental Torment, damage versus inactive, 50%. I mean, you can, there's so much stun potential in power now, it's retarded because of Diversion being with Illusionary Persona and Confounding Suggestions. Like, oh, by Daisy, you're stunned. Oh, you take retarded damage, you're dead. So, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Suggestions, Concentration, Torment. Um, going over to Dueling, like, the only, uh, I don't know, it's kind of it seems they force your hand to go into dueling for the most part just because of deceptive evasion it's just it's too good not to go all the way down the tree for and if you're going deceptive evasion you might as well just pick up fury and blinding dissipation pretty much almost the same deal and the rest is almost kind of depending on your play style when it comes to the final line of either inspiration chaos or illusions because if you go illusions if your power it's just you can either choose between Compounding Powder or Persistence of Memory. Uh, I suppose Phantasmal Haste. And then, obviously, Master Fragmentation. Which is, obviously, what is it? More power on Mind Rack. An extra stack of Confusion, a Cry Frustration. And then, the Diversion is Imbued Diversion, so it's AoE Diversion. And the Reflect on Distortion for that. If you wanted to go in the Chaos Tree... I would probably choose Master Manipulation because pretty much any Shatter Mesmer uses uh, Blink and Decoy. Well, actually, it would just be Blink, right? Yeah, Blink. Yeah, so Blink, you would get Mirror for two seconds, which is pretty nice if you're trying to get away and get a heal off. No headshots, no anything that would interrupt you, so that's nice. And probably chaotic dampening that's a lot of protection if you're running staff so quite a big buff there for protection and then going into chaotic interruption and last but not least going into inspiration this is more team support has a lot of condition cleanse menders purity of power cleanse on your heal shatter conditions when you shatter and then i guess you can go this is really depending on what weapon you use but I can see a lot of people going into power using Staff Great Swords, so it really, this is really up in the air for most power. I mean, I guess you can do Compounding Celerity for Swiftness, but if you're running Torch, obviously I wouldn't do that, so Restorative Illusions or Warden's Feedback. The thing that kind of bothered me the most, it wasn't, because obviously everyone knows that I play uh, Cancer Mesmer or whatever, and they got rid of uh, Clone and Death, which is fine. Because they buffed Condition Shatter, potentially, so I'm pretty happy with that. But, 
the thing is, they were like, oh, let's, uh, you know, it wasn't a healthy play style. But they're puff, they're buffing PU. Like, why would you do that? Like, they're buffing PU and they're buffing Shadow Arts. So, with this PU buff, where's it at? Where's Chaos? Boom. 100% increase. Increase stealth duration for Mesmer skills. Gain random boons while you are stealth. 100%. 100% increase. That's insane. So prestige goes from 3 to 6 seconds. Decoy from 3 to 6. Veil from 4 to 8. Mass invis from 5 to 10. So that's 30 seconds of consecutive stealth. 30 seconds. 33 if because uh, actually because torch is back off cooldown. So you have 33 seconds of fucking stealth from one trait if you just stack stealth. How is that? incorporating a healthy playstyle like it's basically just going to be it's going to be the invis meta because this and shadow arts thieves get like what 50% damage reduction minus protection if they're stealth if they trade for it that's retarded like I don't understand that I mean while I am uh, excited about the new meta that's coming I'm also really scared because it's just bringing just garbage like this into the game that doesn't even need to be there. Like, I don't know, it's kind of hypocritical how they talk about active play when you can't even see your opponent for 33 fucking seconds. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. And also, I was looking at, uh... I had an interesting idea for Mimic. Might as well just put that out there. Like, and I know this might be get shot down and might get made fun of for it, but if you were to make Mimic an elite, and then Mimic would be to mimic the last utility to be used again. And then Mimic's cooldown is double of the trait's original cooldown. So for example, if I... So say if Mimic was an elite, right? Be like, oh, boom, Mimic, Mimic's an elite. So say if, for example, I wanted to use feedback. So I would use feedback, right? Use it on a guy. Oh, that's not feedback. Actually, if my button's working, I'm just going to click it. So, just use feedback, right? And then I would click Mimic. And then, so Mimic would just copy feedback. So I'd be able to use feedback again. And then, if I were to do it, this would become an 80 second cooldown on the actual skill. So it would become double of what the original cooldown I used. So feedback's 40 seconds. So this Mimic, Mimic as an Elite would be 80. I don't know, just something throwing it out there because I know Mimic is a garbage skill and I figured why not actually make it an elite skill that just copied one of your utilities to use again. I don't know. I just thought it would be a, a cool thing to take into consideration. But overall, I thought the changes were good. I thought the changes to PU were garbage. I think that they should possibly... The only thing that, that I think they should change with everything that they've done to Mesmer, or even to all classes, is give the player the ability to choose two master traits if they don't want to choose a grandmaster trait, pretty much like the way it is now. I don't think we should be forced to take a grandmaster trait if we don't want to use it. I think that's just a poor design. And possibly for Mesmer to bring Illusionary Invigoration back, and if you were, at least let us spec for it. Like, I don't know where they would put Illusionary Invigoration if they brought it back into the tree. Let's see, where would be a good place to put Illusionary Invigoration? I have no idea. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure where they would put it. I think asking it to be baseline would be too much, but I'm not sure what they would take out. So regardless, they're going to piss somebody off because you know. So I don't know. Yep, that's just my opinion. Uh, let me know in the comments section down below. What do you think? Uh, do you like it? Do you hate it? And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully I uh, gave you a few good ideas on what you're going to do or suggestions, blah, 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 blah. I don't even know I'm rambling at this point. So I'm Countless. Bring your friends. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys.